every woman watching this or has faked an orgasm. Yeah, oh, 100 I'm convinced every woman on the planet. Welcome back to Lost Cast. I'm Tommy, and this week we're going to be talking about why girls fake their orgasms, what it means for you, and how to tell when she's faking it. Joining me today are two girls who I'm guessing have faked plenty of O's in their time, Natasha Tassini and Georgie Weir. How's it going? Hey. And I said guessing, you know, <laughs> no, I don't Yeah, guessing. Yeah, we have. Every woman watching this or has faked an orgasm. Yeah, 100 oh, I'm convinced every woman on the planet has. 100%. You're shattering a lot of dreams now. I want to go ask men if they actually think any woman has faked it, and they're all going to say no, no, and every woman will say yes. <laughs> You yeah. think? Oh, yeah. Hundred, I put money on it. Yeah, Find out. Don't Let's do believe, it. Men, are, men. No offense, man, but most men are just. I don't know whether they're stupid or their brain won't let them believe that they faked it. Like you know, when you don't want to believe something, I feel like it's kind of. But that, I also like, don't think it's their fault. We like if they're faking it, this like they're saying that they've done it. Like, who are they to yeah, know? If they've yeah. never had a real one, you know. Yeah. And I'm Ooh. really. I got really good at faking it. They sound pretty similar to my real one, so. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about this. It's great to have both of you on specifically because I think you both have experience of um, faking and real. Mm -hmm. And real. You know, in, <laughs> yeah. in professional and personal lives. And I think that your OnlyFans experience would be interesting to go into that. And your acting and OnlyFans experience. <laughs> yeah. I'm really curious to see if you've like had to fake orgasms on film. Oh my God, like I actually that. have. Wow, yeah. So we'll definitely get film? into that. Yeah. I could think you already answered like my first question. I was going to like open it up with just, have you ever faked an orgasm? Yeah. Oh, many um, times, especially when I was younger, before I was secure in myself and I was doing it more for them and like to big them up and wasn't truly confident and secure in my own body for sex and yeah, like to, to, big, to big them up. Cause you think that's the finale. That's what they're working for, given, yeah. given the end. And I'm quite difficult as well to, so to orgasm. for him. Yeah, I think, what, who else? You're not faking it for you. Or the small chances at the time where you do fake it for you when you just want them to stop, I guess. And you're like, oh, you've tried so hard. Here you go. There, there's the finale. <laughs> Here you go. Let's, 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 what, let's watch a movie, you know? So that's a rare, rare time you actually fake it for you. But every other time, of course, you're faking it for them. Why else would you? Yeah. Um, for me, when I was younger, it's actually a bit... This sounds really weird. It might not even sound true, but this is dead weird, right? When I was younger, I used to pretend I'd not had an orgasm. Cause I was really like shy of like saying or like that bit. Like if I was, if I was having an orgasm, I'd try my hardest to make it look like I'm not in the moment. I've noticed that with some girls. Yeah, yeah. Like, that's when I was younger. Yeah, I used to yeah. like because I didn't want them to see that it was happening and be like, "Uh, what is she doing?" Or do you know what I mean? Like I was really, really self conscious. Obviously, this is when I was like, "That's yeah. interesting." Why do you think that is? That do you think that you were never educated about the female climate? Oh, hundred percent. Or... 100%. That's interesting. I, I'd like not had, my school didn't do the sex talk. I've seen my mum's really like, she's really sweet and she's a nice old lady. Do you know what I mean? And she would never go, this is how you have an orgasm. This is what happens. This is what's meant to happen. So this is the, do you know what I mean? Like she didn't even tell me what the clitoris was. So I had to find out like the men do. I was like, wait, where's the clitoris? Um, so yeah. Until recently, I thought girls peed out of their clitoris. <laughs> No. So yeah. that's interesting. You know, that's about four years ago now, but I still think mid thirties is too late to find that. Yeah. Out. Oh, okay. I feel it, like lots of men don't know. Like, it's just because educated. in sex education they say, "Oh, it's like a small penis," mm. and I'm like, "Well, I pee out my penis." Yeah. So, no, yeah, 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 yeah. I understand the logic. Maybe because the yeah, the female genitalia and everything about a woman is so fascinating. Like we actually have more going on than the men, but it's just internal. But I, like, I know the female genitalia by touch rather than by sight because okay. I'm so short-sighted when I take my glasses off like, I don't know <laughs> what's going on. I just have to feel around <laughs> and see like and, yeah what's there going it is. On. and if the girl can like make signals to like know I'm heading for the right area perfect that's yeah. like communication that's all I need, and yeah. vocalizing like I remember when I was young I would never say like oh it's like to the left up a little bit harder like I wouldn't vocalize yeah, I wouldn't so when I was how younger. are these people meant how are you meant your partner is meant to learn yeah. to actually yeah. give you the O oh, if you're not if you're not actually communicating it yeah. I've not been with any girl that's been that specific oh I am uh, the, oh, the, the, I am I'll be I'd like, like I'll literally get the hand and be like that's where you need to be that's, that's the <laughs> bit 
Don't move. Yeah, <laughs> don't move from there. If there was like a manual on like instructions on girls' Tinder profile, like that would just speed things up as well. Oh, 100%. You know, just, 100%. Just put the instructions. I think the thing is as well with like having sex and like getting to an orgasm, though, it's different with each person you have sex with. Of course. So like some things that you do with someone that that makes you orgasm, you might do with somebody else and you're like, this is not hitting it. For sure. Mm -hmm. I think every, yeah, every vagina, every is, is different and every there's certain time. angles, certain things that you oh, need yeah. to hit. And yeah, like I've been with my, um, like a friend of mine said, oh my God, this guy is he's so good. Like he's made me climax with his mouth in 10 minutes. No one can ever do that. And I got really excited, like, because I'm open, we swing, we're poly. And um, I got really excited for it. Went there. Nah. Really? <laughs> not for yeah. me at all you hear that? I was like damn it so yeah, like, every pussy's different you yeah. get that working in porn a lot like because we all know each other and the sex you have okay it's performative sex it's not real sex but sometimes the connection's real yeah and people will say oh this girl's terrible to work with or this guy's so bad but then someone else will be like that's the best sex of my life mm -hmm. And it's like I think you can find you can find your twin. You can find a person that you yeah. match with, like who, yeah, that is really who, good. yeah, that that tick, you kiss really good, or they, you know, you know, they're pushing the right buttons. We, yeah. I feel like the body's got so many pointers that get you aroused, and it's oh, just yeah. not one or two. It's different spots. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And so, did you feel ashamed of having an orgasm? Oh my god, before? yeah. When I was younger, I did. Like when I was. I would say I was what, like what between was the age of like fourteen and sixteen. Made you feel shame. Um, I don't know what it was because, like, looking back, I'm just like, what was I doing? What an idiot! But literally, like, if I was gonna have an orgasm, I'd be like, I'd, I'd literally secretly. It sounds so weird no, to no, say no, out no, loud. It's so interesting. I've seen oh, it like, so many times. I'd like secretly have an orgasm, but then I would just carry on, and then they'd be like, "Did you come?" And I'd be like, "Nope." <laughs> <laughs> You lie. So it's like the, you're the opposite. So you <laughs> are coming and lying. That's I've never met anyone yeah. like. It's that. like you're doming them. Too a bit. shy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was too shy. So I was like, that's really interesting. And then every once in a while, like this is with my, this only ever happened with my first partner. So if he watches this, he's gonna be like, it's that motherfucker. But literally, the first person I ever slept with, like that I was with, I was with him for like a year and a half, two years or something. Um, near enough, ninety percent of the time, I'd lie and be like, nope, I didn't come. Do you remember your first orgasm? Um, not the first one, no, because this is weird as well. But when I first started having sex, I actually first did anal before I did sex. Because again, I'm such a weirdo, but like I didn't want to lose my virginity. Oh. No, I wasn't religious, but I didn't want to, I was, well, I am, I'm a Christian, but it wasn't like anything to do with that. It was more that like, I don't know, maybe I was scared a little bit, but for me at the time I was like, well, I can't lose my virginity. Cause then what, like, what if he leaves me? If, if we have wow. sex, so I did. I did anal with him for about six months before wow. before I had sex with him. You're yeah. so interesting. These are both things that so are quite interesting. shocking me. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Was there something oh, yeah. someone said to you that maybe made you want to uh, save it for so long? To be honest, I'm not sure. I heard a lot of people like, "Oh, you can't just like." You know what it is? It's like people say you, losing your virginity is meant to be a special experience. Mm -hmm. Don't just lose it with anybody and stuff like that. Obviously, I'd been with him for like a year and a half, like I said. But I was like. Am I ready to do this? Like, I'm scared. Do you know what I mean? Like, what if we break up? You weren't scared for anal? I find that mad. Are you no, really into anal now? Anal. Um, when I'm drunk, I am. <laughs> like, when I'm drunk, I'm like, yes, anal, please. Yes. But when I'm sober, I'm like, sex. Because I actually prefer the feeling of sex. Okay, yeah. Um, but yeah, I had anal for like six months. I remember the first time I ever did it. Yeah, out. Yeah, I was like, and I must have been like 15. Yeah, so I was my like, 15. Yeah, I bet. Like, literally, like, took my breath away. I like, bet. Literally, it was like, do you know what I mean? Christ. And I was like, don't forget, I'm four foot ten when I'm stood up. And he was like, like, now he's like six four. So at the time, he was like six two. Sounds like a crime. Hey, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> honestly. Well, she was 15. <laughs> but still. So I lost my virginity 15. But I'm like, I'm like the opposite. So... I um, it's going a bit deep. So that's why I asked you when you if you think you your first orgasm was. Yeah. So I spoke about this briefly on Pal's podcast. Um, basically, I have ADHD. ADHD. ADHD is usually hypersexual. So from a very young age, I was self pleasuring. We're yeah. talking like infant. So at the age of like two. Oh my god. Really? Mm -hmm, I would, oh. but I had no idea it was sexual. Yeah. I just my brain figured out that was pleasure. I'd still be clothed. I would mount the sofa and hump the sofa. Or use like my teddy tubbies, still fully clothed, wow. or I'd use. Can't do that to a teddy tubby. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Which teddy tubby was it? The purple one, Tinky Winky. I was say. Tinky Winky. Yeah, the, the, the leader. 
the so, leader. Um, <laughs> I'd use my duvet and I got like infatuated with it because it's dopamine at the end of the day. So yeah. I was getting infatuated with the dopamine response and I can't tell you when my first orgasm was because I believe it could have been when I was like four or five, really? which is wow. bizarre to think of and, you know, could be triggering to many, but it wasn't even a sexual thing. It was literally, a, a, I felt yeah. pleasure. This is dopamine. I didn't correlate. Yeah, so I had no yeah. idea about sex at that time. So my mother didn't know how to handle this because I got caught and was shamed. And so mm. I never got the talk because they didn't know to have that talk with yeah, me. Yeah. My sister got the talk and it was like, yeah, to save yourself. Like, don't do that. But I feel like she didn't know how to do it with me. <laughs> so, yeah. So I, and then, wow. yeah. So I think I've perfected how to make myself orgasm obviously over years and years and years and years of practice. So for a guy to do it, especially at the beginning of my effort, like being sexual with other people, um, no one could really do it. And I yeah. was not in a position to communicate how to do it and how I wanted it. So for years I faked it. And I'm yeah. looking back, thinking about the people, that egos that I fluffed and they really did not deserve it. <laughs> and when, when like, you do fake it or it seems like it's like a thing that happens when you're young although you're complete opposite yeah. but is it like an instinct to fake it or is it like a plan no i would never say a plan yeah no i never plan to fake it. yeah you don't plan to fake it. obviously you want to orgasm that is the achievement like i said i feel like the only time you fake it for you is if you just want it to stop you know you're, you're not just getting like, there yeah. and you know the guy's a trier he's yeah, really gone trying he's, he's doing all he can and it's just like okay <laughs> mate I'll, I'll give you the medal even though you don't deserve it and then <laughs> <laughs> kind of thing. But, yeah, I wouldn't say you're going to it planning it. You, you want to come. Yeah, no, yeah. I never plan. See, I looked around on women's websites and I was looking for the reason why. And reasons I saw given was just that it's kind of expected. Like, that there's like an anxiety of, oh, there's something wrong with me if I don't. Right. So that's why they may be fake because of like this anxiety of, Oh, there's something wrong what with are my they body. Think about it's me weird. I'm abnormal yeah. if I don't come. But I don't know if that. I don't think that was like based on any research. I can't remember. I'll probably maybe look it up should, at some point. Just. Um... But that's also like that. I think that's that means that they're quite insecure. People are insecure yeah. in sex yeah. and in like. I think most people are. Yeah. It's yeah. very rare to be sexually confident. Mm. And like weirdly, I think it's often neurodivergent divergent people that are. Yeah. Confident. confident. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Like. I know, like, when I meet girls, when she's like, oh, I've got B BPD, is it? I'm like, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah, this one's going to be fun. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, really, Here we go. It sounds yeah. really bad, but, like, that's, no, yeah, like that yeah. one's always like, oh, yeah. yeah, it's gonna yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's going to be emotional, but it's going to be good. <laughs> I think it's because, like, I think with that, so, like, I have ADHD as well, and I think with that, it's like people with ADHD or, like, BPD or stuff like that, they don't, care what other people think as much because your entire life like you have no choice but to not care because otherwise you're gonna feel like shit do you know what I mean like growing up I was completely different to everyone else before before I got diagnosed with ADHD I got diagnosed at like 15. Fucking hell that's around the time I lost my virginity wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell there we go but um yeah before that I was like completely different to everyone else like I was like really loud and talking a lot and like Everything was like all high dopamine sort of thing, always chasing the dopamine. I didn't know I had ADHD. I just thought, oh my God, this is just the way I am. And everyone else was kind of like, hmm, like, why are you being so weird? Why do you talk so much? Or like, why do you talk so fast? Definitely relate to Do you know that. what I mean? <laughs> yeah, literally. So I think people, when they have things, not necessarily wrong with them, but you know what I mean? I think like they have to not care as much what other people think. So for me, that was a journey. I definitely did care. Yeah, I was I definitely did. an insecure person. And it's been it's been a journey of acceptance and self-love to myself. Yeah. And obviously being in the industry, having sex frequently in front of a camera. And I, I don't just make the corn and do OF. I, I've been in the swinging scene and been open, like the unicorn lifestyle for do like nearly 10 years. Do you think you would be doing OnlyFans in other kind of, what what's the word to describe it? like more sexual just being like more sexual than the average person I've if it wasn't for adhd so who knows because i've been adhd since birth you can see me in high chairs well yeah just, like you can just see <laughs> yeah. it so I don't, I don't know if i can really answer that question but i just think i was destined for this before doing of i was a stripper i've always uh -huh. been incredibly promiscuous like flirty like i have a snake and i think she's brought my serpent energy out even oh my God, further yeah. like so 
that yeah, just, I saw that just and me. I was thinking, I it's... hope that's not your service animal. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's just that's just me. So yeah, I feel like um, I don't know because I'm the same. Like I've always had ADHD. I just didn't know until I was 15. Um, How our brain works. Yeah, so I, but I think maybe like the hypersexual ADHD thing, I feel like if we didn't have ADHD, we probably wouldn't be so hypersexual because what you were just saying then about like, um, something you just said, I was like, oh, that's me too. Oh yeah, you said like, you've always wanted, like you do this, but then before you were a stripper and stuff. Mm -hmm. Like when I was younger, I always said like growing up, literally as a toddler to like being a child, I used to say, I want to be a stripper. Mm -hmm. Like I used to tell my mom, I want to be a stripper. And then, the play, the what did your mum say? My mum was like, okay, okay, uh, if you like. <laughs> she reinforced it. Yeah, she was like, okay, <laughs> oh, if you want to. Um, but there's only one place that you can actually like do strip in here mm -hmm. and you have to be 21. So I was like oh. 18 and I was like, yes. And I went in and they were like, you've got to be 21. <laughs> Ella, get down. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> she's honestly, she's obsessive. Ella, get down. Okay, everyone. No, Sorry, okay. okay. Um, yeah, so you have to be 21 to like strip at the only place you can strip in Nottingham. Mm. So I went in there 18. I was like, yeah, fine, it's my time. And they were like, you have to be 21. I was like, <laughs> I was like three more years. <laughs> okay, waiting again. But um, that's the, around the sort of time that I was like, a couple of years after that, I started any fans. So yeah, I think, again, it is like people with ADHD, I think maybe they do just... Like thrill seek or something. Yeah, I think so. Like, oh, it's always chasing the dopamine for me, personally, anyway. Like, anything that's going to give me dopamine... No matter how crazy that is, like that's something that I dopamine enjoy. machine. So, when you fake an orgasm, does the guy believe you? Well, the only times I really fake now, it, it will be on if I'm doing scenes, but I, it, it's it's still very rare I do because my whole content is about being genuine and authentic. So I'm probably yeah, asking yeah. myself a little bit here admitting to faking it sometimes but there's just some creators that i don't form that level of connection with and i'm not able to reach it, it can just be a bad day yeah and just yeah but i still want to do the scene like my orgasms are quite iconic uh, they're they're very big they're very explosive um so like a lot of my fan base expect and want that so there is a time that happens that there is even a few creators that i'm really close with that i sleep with off camera and i'll fake it on camera and he'll even i'll be like that was that was a fake one and they'll be like what and they're outraged and they have no idea and because of course you can fake it because you know we I, I climax a lot so, you know like 300 times a year probably so you said i know how to make it look real the partners outraged that it was fake or especially that one i was being i'm thinking of a yeah. certain person in mind because we're, we're how do they how do they react they weren't happy about it. Really? <laughs> more because not not because of me faking more for their own disappointment because they can normally always do it um, not like annoyed. The ego not... or potentially person that I'm thinking of isn't really doesn't really act too much in his ego, but probably, probably more pride, I guess. Like, yeah, mm. he's not Um, for me, sorry, what was the question? <laughs> <laughs> Do people know you're faking? Oh yeah, no, definitely not. Um, I see, because like obviously you said yours are like really big and explosive, and that's what your fans expect. Like mine are a lot more subtle than okay. what I can expect. Obviously, I don't. Can know. you can you more than uh, once orgasm? Then are you like yeah yeah see I'm I can not, I can't. so I can do it three times in a row, oh, but <laughs> not like instantly. It's like orgasm, and then maybe like forty five seconds orgasm, and then like about a minute then orgasm. But then after that, I'm completely done. But I train myself to do that. They different. Um, like. Like different pictures with yeah. your voice. Um, they normally, they feel better and better. So it's like when I've done the first one, it doesn't feel like, you know when you have the orgasm and you're like, oh, you feel relieved that like, yeah. oh, it's done. It's it doesn't feel like that. Oh, so then wow. you have to do the second one, then you have to do the third That's one. That's so interesting. See, mine's, mine's not. Mine's a big old, big old hike to the top. And then you get to the top of the hill and then it's just like, you've really, it's really hard to get over the, over the yeah. edge. So you're on that top of that hill. Well, I could be on top of that hill for a long time. Yeah. I'm near there, near there. Come on, go and I'll, I'll stay there. And that's where the energy is high. Yeah. And then it's just the over the hill. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And mine, yeah, I can, mine can last a long time yeah. though. Mine can last like 20 to 45 seconds. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just like the thing with being honest is I thought maybe um, some girls like might fake it just because of how guys reacted when they were honest, maybe. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Uh, I, I, I wasn't I've sure if that was a shamed. thing. Not shame, but I just thought like maybe if you do fake, the guy might be like, like you say, hurting him. Uh, right. Mm. Um, I don't think if you're going to fake it, you're not going to tell him afterwards. That was just because of that's a regular person that I play with. It normally happens. And that was just on scene as a rare occasion. But I think if it's someone that you're faking it with, 
you're not going to then be like, unless you're having an argument or you break (laughs) up. Yeah. And then you'll yeah. be like, I don't think whilst you're still together or you're having dinner, you're going to be like, babe, by the way, last Tuesday, that was that was fake. Like yeah, that. yeah, no, 100%. That's the other thing that I was wondering is, mm. is it just like a, an insult that girls use after a breakup? Like the same way as like, um, like they never have a problem with the penis size until after the breakup. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's because people don't communicate. People don't in the moment. It'll be hard, I think, for penis size, definitely to say that way in a relationship to have the communication. But you could say... You never maybe come like, yeah. and that could that might not be just to have a go. That is she gone between your legs? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't fake it and then say I faked that. I th- I feel like now I've got an no, order. No, no you, you <laughs> I would, would fake it and then be like, by the way, that was fake. No, no, no. Like, <laughs> please, next time you fake an orgasm for me, not for me. Next, <laughs> could, hey, next time you fake an orgasm, can you do something for me? I want you to like jump out of the bed. And then just like bow and tell them. <laughs> and be like, that was fake, by the way. And they'll be like, God, my mom probably on camera I'll as well. Do that. <laughs> so that I could send I'll actually do that. Um, I had to do yeah. it recently on a scene, and it's it's someone that I shoot with, and it's so strange because on paper, we should be like perfect for each other. Like, we're both yeah. like things that we're attracted to, and then just physically when we're together, it just neither of us can get Hate there. It. And yeah. it's, but it's also the same for him. He had to fake it. So we had to fake it with him. So it's just like, but. You don't want to be in the moment like, we just don't really fancy each other, do you? But we do like no, each no, other. I mean, yeah. I was going to ask this, actually, because when I looked at the stats, men also fake orgasms. And it's actually really common. And yeah. I was curious if you two had, um, if you thought men had ever faked with you. Um, so I have like a weird one with this. So basically, I'm really good friends with somebody I slept with which like, is off-brand for me, I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I, I generally don't sleep with people. So like, um, this year I've slept with like three people. Oh my God, we're in December. Well done, me. I've done, like, that, I've done <laughs> that in a day. <laughs> I've done that in one scene. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't generally like sleep with people just for like personal preference. You know what I mean? A lot of my friends sleep with loads of people or whatever. Like I don't care. Do you know what I mean? But I generally don't sleep with a lot of people. I slept with him. We were drunk. And um, we're really good friends. He's probably going to watch this, actually. It's a bit <laughs> awkward. Um, but he said to me the other day, I, t- I told him like what the topic of this podcast is going to be. And he was like, oh, like, and I said, yeah, because women fake it and like men don't. And he said, men do. I was like, what? <laughs> and he was like, I've faked it before. And then this is, bear in mind, this is like a month or two after we slept together. I was like, huh. Um, I was like, why? Why would you? And he's like, oh, sometimes it's just like not going to happen or you don't want him to feel shit because you're not like, because you're not going to come or what? Like, it for you? To, I don't know. Like, that's oh. what I'm thinking. This <laughs> is what I'm thinking. Like, Has it put doubts in no, your head? No, I didn't. Say, it's put doubts in my head. Do you so feel if you're like, watching this and you know who you are, please. Do you feel like you need to see him again, improve yourself? <laughs> I actually, well, obviously, we're not going to sleep together again because we're friends. But like the day that we slept together, we were both really drunk. And, I, like, can't, I can't orgasm when I'm drunk or on any form of drugs. And it's like, yeah, it sucks. Because after you've been at a rave, I've seen with yeah. this guy, this holding you all night, kissing your neck, and you go back and shag, and I, my clit numb. Like I've got like it's like it's like my bright like on, when I'm on drugs, it's oh it's such a nightmare. Even if it's like ten yeah. hours later and I haven't done anything, uh, literally I'll have a wand and it's just absolutely numb. Nothing numb. Wow. But literally recently, I went to I went to a rave and then I went to a party and then I went to a sex party after party and I'm getting my favorite thing. I'm getting spit roasted, which I just absolutely love I've got the wand everything's going on and just dead nothing it's like really? my, it's like my clit is just not on it's like it's gone for vacation yeah, like it's like i took drugs and it's like oh I, th- I knew we weren't gonna be in play and it's just it's just mm. switched off oh no. yeah i don't drink alcohol anymore now so it's yeah. like I, but when i would drink it'd be just just top of the hill at the hill and just and not, not coming there. off no oh. no just sliding back down yeah. yeah for me if i fake it's two reasons the main you have you, plenty of times really yeah on in real life it's not just set like in on... real life i've not faked in at work because okay. um you need it well because you gotta yeah you need the juice like I, if i'm struggling at work i just think of the money i'll lose on ah like, the money hotel, the model, it's like okay gotta, gotta get through this yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, um but yeah if it's your personal life you like you don't you don't need so the two reasons i would fake is if like my body runs out of energy Oh, okay, and gas. Because it's like yeah. a workout, isn't Gassed, it? Gassed, yeah, 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 like, for sure. I'll just be like, like, I guess not, not now, but in the past, I would have like just pretended. Yeah, guys yeah. have um, got to put the cardio in. Yeah. I'm, I'm oh, a they do. I'm a princess. Oh, like, so am I. I'm I'll exactly ride you, but for the best three minutes of your life. Oh, my I'm God, gassed. yeah, yeah, yeah. Not even three minutes for me. I'm <laughs> on top of like 30 seconds and I'm like, done. <laughs> yeah. So that's one reason, yeah. And then the second reason is just, 
yeah i think girls get this as well is when you're with someone and you realize quite quickly it's not going to work it's like your bodies don't go together well mm -hmm. the person is just like you don't match they, they're a dead fish in mm -hmm. bed yeah. they don't they don't communicate they don't do anything they don't even touch you they just lie there Ugh. and it's like yeah well, i'm just gonna like uh, it's like i should have bailed out earlier but yeah. okay, i'll bail out now. yeah like you keep hoping that at some point they're gonna come to life but yeah no. but they, they don't, don't. They don't. Uh, well, 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 in that instinct why don't you would you never communicate like and I, I, stop I, being a dead fish I, <laughs> I, I communicate well and i try and like make it i understand that not everybody does the kind of job that we do mm -hmm. and also doing this job it can make a lot of normal people are intimidated or nervous because they think that we know some magic tricks that mm -hmm. we don't um so i always try to just be open go slow but a lot of people are just boring or have so many insecurities that they yeah. can't do anything i think just it's, it yeah. comes down to sex education like we're yeah. taught from porn or from some very outdated thing and we're not we learn about yeah, the system the systematics of it and like you know, how we get pregnant, what's going on, but we don't actually learn about pleasure. We don't yeah. learn about the clitoris. We don't learn no. about... I think more you know, than that. G-spot and all these kind of stuff. We don't learn about that. And I guess that they yeah. don't want to encourage it in school. I think more than that. I think plenty of times when I've had sex with girls, I felt like they've maybe had sex before they were ready to. Right. And I think there's no problem just going slower. Mm -hmm. like, yeah. It's really not a problem for most people, but... I always felt like some girls will just kind of, they feel like they need to give you it. Yeah. To kind of keep you, to keep yeah. you interested. Mm -hmm. I feel like some girls do feel like that. Like insecure people particularly. Yeah. And then they get there and they're not confident in themselves. They're not ready. And it's like, it's I've seen that so many times. Like I've got, I'm quite good friends with like lots of men. And um, they'll all say to me like, oh, da, da, da. like I was talking to her, but I stopped replying for a little bit. And then she randomly sent me a nude and I'm like, mm. Yeah, like, and I'm like, the reason she did that is because you weren't talking to her, so she felt like she could mm. get you back if you if she sent a nude. Oh, and that's they're so like, sad. and that's they don't even know. They're like, really? And I'm like, yeah, that's why she sent the nude. I don't like, think the girl knows why she's doing it either. Yeah, no, she it's thinks yeah, like that's how it's sad. Yeah, it's sad. It's really sad. I just think like when you fake it, especially say for example, you've gone on a date. You've hypothetically here, you're on the third date. You've gone. You've had. You're having sex. You've faked an orgasm in the first five minutes. He's not hitting your spot. You know, and now, then if you date that person and you're with them six months and they now think that's how that's to how make to you do it, yeah. So, like, what is setting yourself up for failure? But obviously, we don't think, we don't think that. Like, yeah. I've come from experience of, like, I definitely did fake it. I definitely did. And back then, was your fake orgasm different to your real one? Mm, I don't. To be honest, because I, don't, I wasn't really orgasming with other people. I was orgasming by myself. And because I, I was in at home, and addicted yeah, to dopamine, you're not gonna put I, on was, a show I was able to really control it. Even though they're still very yeah. intense, I was able to be it's quiet. Different. Even though now the thought of actually being quiet for an orgasm with a partner, I don't actually think would be physically possible. Like, <laughs> but, but um, yeah, no, they weren't. They, they weren't. I'm trying to think if I ever, guys, even maybe come when I was younger. Maybe from... Uh, no, I don't. No, I really don't think I had many orgasms with partners before the age of 25. Because mm. the thing I'm thinking of is um, maybe you can tell us the difference between a real and a fake orgasm so guys can know what's happening. But again, it's different. Sis, hers is quite, they're quite small and she's quite quieter where I am a shouter. Like, and I've obviously made people calm. Like I, and I'm, I'm bisexual, so I work with a lot of girls. Mm -hmm. Every girl is different. I've had girls, I've done it, and I'm like, oh, I didn't make her calm. And she was like, I can't believe you made me calm. And I'm like, eh? Yeah, you did Excuse come, me? and you were like, "Yeah, yeah, I told." And I was like, "What?" Because it's so different to mine. Because everyone in the room, like, I, I go to swinging clubs, and everyone in the club knows I'm coming. But <laughs> like a lot of the times, people that I've worked with, like, I've had no idea, and I'm the one being doing it. And they've been like, "Yeah, yeah, okay." And I'm just like, "Oh, wow, okay." See, we had a little bit of this conversation off camera before. For me, I think if a girl is quiet at the beginning and just gradually builds up to it, I can tell, mm -hmm, and. Yeah. But the problem is loud girls, the ones that are like making sex noises when they're giving you a blowjob. It's like, come on. Like, that's yeah. porn though. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, that's some girls not talking do that porn. in their real life. Yeah. And you know, the ones that are screaming like before you've touched them. Almost, yeah. You know? yeah. Like French girls, let's say. I don't know. For some reason. <laughs> yeah. For some reason, French, French like um, Mediterranean girls are always very, very loud. 
Mm. Interesting. Uh, in my experience. They must have just started like that and then they've just continued and then just set the pattern of behaviour and conditioned their own mind to behaviour and that's how, yeah. they, that's how they now, now do it. But when someone's really loud, it's I don't know what's going on. Yeah, you don't know like, hard to tell. If you make any change or do something different, you don't, like, they're just reacting to everything mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah, so that's the so thing. How, how can you know? what's right, what you're doing right and what you're doing wrong in that so instance. So like. what I do before I shoot with anyone, because all my content's about being authentic and genuine, um, I any co-star that I work with, I sit them down and I say, what what do you like? What turns you on? What do you not like? Um, please, during the scene, like, at any point, tell me if I'm a bit to the left or, you know, a little bit more pressure or ease up or just be like, let's make it a team if I want you to enjoy this. like It works so well in yeah. professional settings. Yeah. But I think in the real world, like, okay, if you're in a swinging club or with like-minded people, that does work. But I think with the average person, it's like if I say to a girl I'm dating, oh, what do you like? And we haven't slept together yet. She'll say, I like everything. Really? Yeah. And, uh, and the first thing, I, when they say that, I go, oh, let's do some rimming then. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. <laughs> but, so it's like, I did this, like, uh, it's really, really hard, I find, mm-hmm. to create, like, an atmosphere where someone feels confident and safe sharing to express, yeah. with someone that they haven't had sex with yet. Yeah. But I think there's also it, so many things that you can play with and so many people haven't they've all had like quite vanilla basic sex instead mm-hmm. of like exploring like you gotta build you know, up to it. They're just going straight to this when really like I'm really into nipple play. I'm really into being bitten and stuff, but some people wouldn't have even and I spent time doing that and like you know, like being spanked and stuff like that. And I have feel safe enough to express, like, mm. this is, like, my foreplay. Like, I ain't, like, do that. And, you know, some other people haven't been able to explore these other things that you can do with your body yeah, yeah. in and, a safe way. And it's so easy to forget that, like, the average person is not very experienced. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The average person might, I think the average man might not have had sex for two years That's or something wild. crazy. I see, I'm so, so biased. I literally only really sleep with people in the industry yeah. and like I remember <laughs> I remember one of my friends, she um she said to me that her boyfriend got freaked out because she was like, Can we have sex in doggy style? And for him it was adventurous. It was like trying a new position. And he was like in his late thirties. Oh my That's god. So, uh, wild. And there's plenty of people like that, like men and women. Yeah. Yeah. And it's I have had a few times when I'm having sex and they've even shocked me with some moves. I had one guy that we were in doggy. How do I do this? We were in doggy and he like spun round. He did the helicopter. Yeah, he like spun round. So yeah, I'm I'm bent over and he was obviously doing it normal and he's like put his one leg over. So we're more like arse to arse. So he and, like spun around 180 degrees. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, the helicopter. Still inside me. Got me. There's, <laughs> there's um yeah, and strong. <laughs> But there's, um, like, what is going on? <laughs> there's videos of like, I think it's from like Japanese porn. There's like this okay. famous video where the guy's spinning, pushing, spinning, clapping his hands while he's spinning. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> it's mental. <laughs> Bloody hell. It's just, I, I really see sex as adult play. Yeah. And that's what it is. We've all lost our sense of, you know, our inner child and being able to play. And mine comes alive when I'm having sex. Like, I can truly play. But that is because I've been on a journey of, self-acceptance and like confidence and you are right I, most people in the real world are vanilla they haven't had these experiences and obviously i'm incredibly biased but it's adult play just play it's <laughs> interesting yeah. because i've gone the other way um like yeah. after doing porn and having like a very hedonistic life i've kind of like pulled back from that and yeah. for me i see it more as connection now mm. yes it's just how i express like my deepest emotions maybe yeah I feel like that. But maybe I'll like go the other way again after a while. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but at the minute, I'm more in like. A... Yeah, like in a more chilled. Yeah. Oh, see, I know. I know exactly what I like. And what you were saying earlier about with different partners, it's different ways to come. Yeah. Not for me. Yeah. I'm a very, um, if the way to make me calm 97% of the time, unless you're one of the kings of oral, very small selection of few being able to do it. But it's on my back, pillow under the hips, folded over, tilting the hips up. Oh, you, Legs. Need, you need equipment. No, no, a pillow. <laughs> no, just a pillow. Just a pillow. I need a pillow, Prop. though. No matter, the si- no matter the side, I need that tilt in my hips. And sometimes it can be so simple as that to reach mm-hmm. climax, climax. And girls could be in that position. They'd be like yeah. getting so close. And I've done it. I've been without the pillow and they're plowing. And I'm just like, 
unfortunate. I need my pillow. And I need that slight tilt just to hit yeah. whatever's going on inside me, yeah. which is my which is my button, and then I'm and I'm there. Yeah. Thirty seconds, DJ DJ myself to completion, and yeah. you hit it. Yeah, I'll exactly. DJ it. Yeah. Big finale. And it can be mental as well. Like I know a girl where, like, if it's not working for her, if you say, "Oh, I'm going to make you pregnant." Oh yeah, breeding kink. She will just. Yeah. That, the guy that I was telling you about that I think he's got a breeding kink. Oh, so really? I just say that. I just say it to him about like, because we shouldn't really do it. But I, I, <laughs> yeah. And I'll, I'll just say he, he can hear, he see him just quivering like that. Yeah. That's his thing. <laughs> and so do you think it's like you're more likely to fake it in a one night stand or mm, in yeah. a relationship? Because I've got some stats on this. I feel like personally more in a one night stand, personally for me, when I've been in relationships, I've been confident enough to say to not I wouldn't fake it in a relationship. I'd just go, No, you didn't make me come. I think that's quite a hard one. Again, I think I'm incredibly biased to to know to yeah. know this. But I think statistically it would be more of a one night stand, but yeah. more for the sake of not to fluff their ego, but to make it stop, make it to be like, oh, that they've done their thing. Like, yeah, he's I've gonna had enough go- now. He's going to keep going. Like, yeah, I've had enough. Let's just yeah. let's just wrap it up. Bored of this. Show. Um, I'm never going to see you again. So instead of being harsh, let's be let's be kind. I would say more on that, and then, but then in a relationship, maybe that could be the same as well. I think I think I'm incredibly biased. I think I'd, I'm interested to know the stats. Mm. Yeah, I'm just looking for them now. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I was like, I've got yeah, stats I on this. Talking. I haven't yeah, had many, many one night so, stats. Oh, I guess I did when I was younger. When again, I was yeah. I didn't know how to come. I think since learning the pillow trick and putting yeah. that under my I've hips heard about that and trick. just that slight, that slight rotation. Because what yeah. position is your key to come in, or can you do it in any? Um, not. I don't like doggy style. Right. I like. I have oh, a thing against it. I don't know why, but like, oh, like I a, just like you got a, like a campaign. No, like no, a... <laughs> campaigning <laughs> against doggy style. No, like. <laughs> When I'm in doggy style, I'm just like, there's nothing. I think it's because I also have to be like, DJ, touching myself, yeah, DJ, and as you like to say, yeah, you can hold yourself. Properly. Yeah, but then, then it's then it's more because for me, because I've got one hand down and I'm kind of like, yeah, it's hard. It's I'm hard like a dog with only three yeah. legs. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Dog with <laughs> three legs. Do you know what I mean? So it's a bit. I prefer like missionary or so I like missionary. Do you never do the pillow. Or I want to start doing the pillow. Oh, thing, do the yeah. pillow. When I'm in the moment, I forget the pillow. Oh, no, thing. Mine, instant, <laughs> mine literally, I grab it instantly. Most of my play partners now grab it for me because they know that pillow's going under yeah, me. Yeah, yeah, you need the and pillow. And they can even, they, if it's in the moment, about two minutes in, they'll be like, I need my pillow. <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's not happening. It's not working. And it's any pillow. It's not a specific Do they leave like a to. chocolate mint on the <laughs> pillow? <laughs> yeah, every time you're like, right, now, nah, well done. You've done it now. Um, Okay, let's just go through some stats because I think they're interesting. I think people okay. want to know. These are from uh, Zava Med. I think we have to credit them. So there we go. Um, let's make it a little bit of a quiz. What percentage of men and women do you think have faked orgasms? I think women, 90%. Oh, <laughs> God, that was high. I'd say, yeah, so, women, 90, men, men, 45. I think men, 30. 68% women and 27% men. So it's like right. oh, okay. 30 is close. I wonder, the Alan, women one must be lying. Is this still. the women everyone has had sex? This was like a kind of more, this was a survey of 2,000 people in America and the UK. I, wonder if, I bet I wonder if all of those people have had sex to actually like, because I find that incredible. I, I think, think so, because it's 60. like... Yeah, um, it's got to be 60, more than that, 100%. That Maybe their partner was right next to them at the time. It's done by yeah. a clinic that um, oh. specialises in like testing and things like that, so I'm sure they've had sex. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, Karen, oh, I'm sure. intrigued. Maybe it's true. Um, on sexual orientation, do you think straight, bisexual or gay people are more likely to fake? Straight. Straight. So straight women are more likely to fake, mm-hmm. but it's kind of similar across the board. So for lesbian women, it's sixty percent. For straight women, it's sixty-eight percent. Um, bisexual is kind of in more. It's not a big difference. Okay, interesting. You think but, lesbian women won't be faking it because kind of women know yeah, women, you know and, I mean? and the but more with, safe space to yeah, actually exactly. be. You can talk yeah. about it. But with men, it's like twenty-five percent. Yeah, no. they've never faked it. And then it. gay men, it's up to 40%. What, are faking it? Really? Yeah. Shit. Wow. That must just so. be an ego fluff. Or oh, to make it to make it end, to make it finish. It yeah, maybe they're just like, yeah. oh, I can't I guess they anymore. experience some of yeah. the similar things that women experience. That's interesting. How often do you have real orgasms during a sexual encounter? So always is 9% of women, but 45% of men. Yeah. Oh my but God. That's that, that means that's, 50, that, that, that means fifty five percent of men are not coming every time. 
And so we're like 80% of women are not coming every time. If you're going more than once in an evening, maybe the second time, but like, I would say 45% is is lower than I definitely thought. Yeah, it's really diverse. What what would you say yours are? Like, how often are you coming in sexual experiences? Um, uh, So do you know what? It's hard with me because I've slept with like eight people and the people that I've slept with, like mostly partners. So like one of my partners, every single time we had sex, I come. Every single time I had sex, I come. Um, But then when I have like, I've had like three one night stands and then I've had like other partners where I'm like coming sometimes, sometimes I'm not. Do you, Did you come I mean? with those one night stands? Um, with so I've had four one night stands actually. If you count my friend. Oh, okay. You got to count. And... You can't just leave people out. <laughs> right. Okay. If you count my friend, <laughs> I've had four on one digits. night stands, and three of them I didn't. One of them I did. Was the friend the one you did? It was uh, the friend. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or well, she's just the... saying that because he's it was watching the friend. Now. So you're less... watching, he's gonna be like, I would you... say out of times, I, especially now, now I'm very, I'd say I'm not dominant, I'm domineering. <laughs> I yeah. like tell them very what I want and how I want it kind of thing. And I, I'm there to finish it. I've even done it when they're finished. I've carried on. I've got them pulled the dildo out and like, actually finished me off. I'm not, I'm not think... having it kind of thing. I've done that many a times. Yeah. If you think about it, only one person can fake. So it's almost like if you don't fake, maybe he did. Right, okay, to, yeah, end. It... Oh, yeah, but you could just keep Try going. Think <laughs> men are fake to be, you know? Cause it's, <laughs> the thing with guys, it's easy to tell if they're faking, you uh, know, juice no, comes out, so uh, it's... But you can just, like, throw the condom away. Yeah, they away can tell it was inside. Like, so unless you're inspecting those condoms. I guess. Yeah, because yeah, when they come inside you, it's like, how are you going to know? No, see, I'm, I'm not... But inside, you'd know. Right? Mine's different, because yeah. I'm... No, 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 no you, you wouldn't know. You can't, can't tell inside. It. I can't tell when I can't feel it. Some you people can feel can. it pulsing a little bit. I Some can feel it pulsing can. sometimes if they leave it in. But when they come, if they pull it, like, after about five seconds, if they pull it out, I would. No, I have no idea. Yeah, I'd have, I've, I've never been able to feel it. I've actually had this with my friend when we were young, 15, 18, 15, 16. She would say she'd feel it. She'd feel it go inside and she'd feel the calm. And I'm like, never. No, I've I never felt I that. And I've even I've tried to actively try and feel it. And no, nah, nothing. I'd, so I wouldn't have known. Could be some faking then. Yeah, what exactly. with guys with us, they might be faking with us. I don't know because my my thing is might... I get they because I'm not on birth control, so they pull out and come over me. Oh, so right. that's You're right, normally you're safe. so I'm like you're safe. Yeah, they came, they they came for sure, for sure. Yeah, he's not like oh, what's that over there? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so bad. Um, yeah, so it's like five percent of women have never. Never orgasm with partners. Twelve percent ever. They've never had an orgasm oh, with, with partners. partners. <laughs> yeah, twelve um, percent rarely. Thirty-one percent sometimes. Forty percent almost always. Um, and nine percent always. I think I'd say I'm, especially now, I'm almost always. And then I think from un- twenty, from sixteen to twenty-four, I'm the the lowest one. Not the not the never, but the the really yeah. very rarely. Yeah. Like I'm that one. Frequency of faking. Um, women, it's never 32%. Men, 70%. Um, so rarely, it's women, 34%. So it's like, not there's not as much faking happening as, as we, we would have thought. Yeah. Oh. Sometimes, 25%. How many is always? Always is only 2%. Well, I'm women. lucky for them girls. I think they must just like give up. Just think. Yeah, they must just go, no, I know someone. Or they're just, with, they're just with the same partner. And it's like I said before, if you've done it on the third date and now they're just doing it and there's the lack of the communication. And maybe I think it's also key to explore your own body and to yeah. know what you want and to have self-pleasure and self-connection. Do you think there's some girls where they have an orgasm every time, but also they fake and exaggerate it because they want to, you know, put on a show? But mm. they exaggerate, mm, yeah, I've, probably. I've actually, I've done that as well in scenes where I've, I've like had like four orgasms, but only like two of them were real. And I think it was, I think it was to make it stop because it's like you don't want it, like you're not feeling this thing, but you can see they're really into it. And because I do that whole like getting up there and I'm on that hill and I'm nearly <laughs> there, because I'm nearly there and I'm nearly there, and I vocalise I'm nearly there. You don't want to be like, oh, it's not happening. So it's just meant it to be like, yep, yeah, okay, let's switch it around, kind of thing. Yeah. So yeah, I've been guilty of that a few times. Yeah. Okay, so who do you think fakes more, Americans or Europeans? Americans. Yeah. 53% of Americans, 36% of Europeans. Wow. How skilled is your partner in bed? I don't so, have one. 
So, oh, is that a, oh, I thought it was yeah, yeah. Meg. Oh, it's the so, like, so yeah. the the people in Americans, um, twenty seven percent are happy with their partner. Wow, that's low. Forty percent say the partner's below average skill level. Oh, forty percent. It's not separated by gender. So more. So it's more than that. Oh, wow. Europeans, forty percent are happy, and only thirty five percent. And that's Below why Africa. monogamy is a con. Go to yeah. a local swinging club <laughs> and explore, <laughs> explore, explore. Big old advocate You're for that. Yeah. yeah. I was um, going to say, you yeah. said earlier, Polly, I'm very practice open love, love without attachment. I, cause I, like I said before, I see sex as adult play. You don't want to play with one person forever. Like, you know, just play with this, play with other people. And I'm, I'm very detached from love with sex like I just see you know other partners as other sex toys like you know you might want to go over 10 inch today or like a nice curved 6.5 inches that day and it's just every different piece of equipment you know hits a different button vaginas and female anatomy is so complex like and there are so many bits and bobs inside and about like that you're hitting something different every time like I can be with someone who's very average, but, you know, rock hard. And sometimes they feel even better than like, you know, a 10 inch like, yeah. Cause it's a different day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is the bit that I really wanted to get to the reason I opened the stats. Mm-hmm. So, um, one night stands and in oh, yeah. a marriage. Oh yes. They're the situations where women are least likely to fake an orgasm. Least likely Wait, which one? So, least... one night stands and marriage. Are the least likely to fake. Yeah. Out of what? It's a uh, 20%. Um, baked in a one night stand or marriage but in new relationships or in long-term relationships it's about 30 yeah. percent yeah because sometimes like a girl will date a guy and will really like him be attracted to him but like the sex doesn't work mm-hmm. like yes. you kind of try to yes. make it work don't you but i've had so many girls complaining like it's just not working or, yeah i had that like, toys baby like, for like years out. yeah but i think if you commit to someone and marry them maybe communications you've, you've, you've got yeah. over that haven't yeah you? probably I think this is the acceptance of toys. I remember with one of my exes, he just wasn't getting like proper hard. Like, so I just put a butt plug in his ass. Boy, that boy was rock hard. <laughs> rock hard. So yeah, explore with toys. And they can yeah. be really simple ones. Like there's some like you can get like something for your finger and it's just like a, a little vibration on the tip of your finger. And even just playing with like around like the Gucci area, the ball area. Yeah, like, yeah. Like explore it all. I feel like we're just so systematically programmed to be like, Right, blowjob, penetration, done. Or like, yeah. you know, kiss. And that's or- a stereotype about guys, but like girls do it too, I find. Like what? just straight to. Mm. Then again, I think that's a problem yeah. with porn. And I think the miseducation and with lack of communication from parents, obviously I understand it's a very difficult subject, but at the end of the day, we are all a product of sex. We will all have sex. It's nothing to be ashamed of. It's. You know, it's good for exercise. It's good for dopamine. It's good yeah. for connection. You just, if you do it in a healthy and safe way, like it should be advocated for and spoken I about. Agree. And there should be a difference between and discussion between that that is broadcasted, the the fake porn, and then what real what real sex is. Because it's inevitable if you've got a 14, 15 year old child. Yeah, it's going to be obviously really difficult to have that conversation with your child. But or if you don't, they're going to be around their friends or in back of the field watching Pornhub on their phone with a group of friends and they'll be looking at these women getting absolutely slammed and, you know, probably slapped and, you know, pulled about and think, that's sex. Yeah. I recently learned from a friend that he was talking to his younger sister and the first time she had sex, she got choked. Mm-hmm. I love to be choked. I'm all about it. But the first time you have sex when you're with a partner and you want that connection, that's not what it's about. But obviously she's yeah. been programmed from porn or the partner yeah. had and it's not it's not even people's fault because how else are they going to learn it but we obviously have this massive issue of like no, people don't want to learn sex yeah. education in school this is you know vulnerable people but then it's inevitable we live in a system where it's yeah. all you have to do is i'm 18 or over you can literally watch a girl get absolutely fisted uh, from any age yeah, and throwing up in a dog bowl and yeah and it. so i i feel yeah. like there needs to be put in place of education yeah and uh, yeah i saw something recently sorry I, know. I saw something recently where um, it's a, a guy, I won't mention his name because everyone hates him at the minute, but it's like a Netflix series that he's doing. I don't know him, by the way, but <laughs> everyone hates me. He you did, can he say did it. like a. No, I mean, so his name's Matt Rife. Okay. I'm, just, I'm assuming you guys know who that I don't, is. I don't. Oh, it's like a comedian that everyone hates. Oh, him. that okay. I saw someone comedian was going viral for Why like, do we hate him? Because um, he made he, a sexist joke. He it? made a domestic violence joke, but it was oh. like. Um, 
But if it's a joke, it's yeah. a joke. So for people, me, yeah. personally, my, my humour is like pitch black. Like, I love like really, really dark humour. So I, when I heard the joke before that, I was like, <laughs> and then I was like, saw that and I was like, oh, maybe I shouldn't have laughed. But like, I don't know. Anyway, he, on the reason I'm mentioning Matt Rife, mm-hmm. re- on his thing, he was talking about no one had the sex chat with him. And he was like, I think he said he was 12 and he found like, some v- VHS tapes mm-hmm. and one of them was like a sex one. So you just picked up the first one and put it in and it was a girl having sex with, there was like five people there. So he My just favorite. believed at that point that sex always had to be with five people. He didn't think sex was just two people. He thought sex right. was with five people. Yeah, he's only 12. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, yeah. he saw that and no one talked to him about it. So he was like, well, this must be what sex is. I used to think you have to speak German in during sex for the same reason. Really? Because you were watching German porn? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> really? Po- I when I was young, po- hardcore bit. porn was illegal in the UK, so it wasn't made. Aye. You only had softcore. So you'd always get pirated VHSs from Germany or France, and they'd be oh American God, and they'd be like with German yeah. dubbing. So <laughs> like, oh, my God. So all you'd hear is like just... And it's, apparently it's the people that dub all the German porn, they're quite famous. And I think it's the same, like, Man and woman that dub oh, every it? American porno into Oh, my God. Well, it, used to, it used to be like that. Interesting. And it was just like, mm, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> German's like the most unattractive accent as well. I'm yeah. Like, sorry to all the For Germans. sex. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Sex no, I just think German, German, the German accent just scared, terrifies me a little bit. Sorry, all the Germans. <laughs> I went to Germany recently and everyone there, it's like I had this assumption that everyone in Germany was like, rah, 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 rah. But then when I went there, I told them that, and they were like, "Yes, we they they say this to us all the time." I was they, like, they changed. They them, were like, like really like sweet, softly spoken. I, was I like, used oh. to work in Germany quite a bit, and the way Germans behave to each other is so formal and quite aggressive. And when they speak in German, but then when they speak English, they change. Yeah, and they're like, like, "Hello, they, you okay?" <laughs> like like when Germans answer the phone, they answer with their last name. So they're just like, so it's like McDonald. Yeah. <laughs> like, like what <laughs> there's no yeah. hello there's nothing <laughs> so it's like that they're just like yeah. straight to the point and direct but when they speak english they just chill and they try yeah. to be a bit cooler oh. i'm trying to think of my like first exposures to sex now as i've just been talking about that like i think mine was from when i was like trying to remember oh one of the main scenes, you know, you know, dirty dancing. This isn't even sex, but you know, when then she walks in with the watermelons and they're all like really like grinding. It's weird, but we had this on the other night. And they're really you've seen dirty dancing. No, I've not seen. Oh, oh, you're in for a treat. <laughs> yeah, watch it. And I used to, I remember because obviously I was tinky winking at that time, yeah. so I would like re, or I'd rewind just that little clip of her going in <laughs> with the watermelons. Oh, really? and I remember I, I used to have a TV in my room, so I'd stay up late. And, Sex cetera, that was it. That is what I remember that show, I think. Very, very peculiar show. So I was probably about twelve when I started watching that late at night. And I'd find it so interesting. Sex has always fascinated me. It'll be people like Same. who have got like a saddle on their back and a bit in their mouth and they're being ridden around the park or, you know, massive balloons and they're holding and humping balloons or, you know, men dressed as babies. So at the very young age, very, very young age, I was exposed to this world of fetish and of sex like and, and kink. Yeah. And all that, and I've never had an, a parental discussion. The only sex education I got in school was about periods and semen and egg and all that kind yeah. of stuff, and never about that. So my exposure, I guess, I, I think guess it's changed me to where now. I am. Yeah. I looked up um, British sex education curriculum, or I mm. think it was curriculum. It was a curriculum that's advised by a charity, and it actually looked pretty good. Okay. It had like a pornography section. Um, oh. Taught people about porn and how it's not real and things like that. I can't remember oh, the specifics, but. It genuinely did look a lot better. Oh, good. Than it was. Yeah. I think what I think what you've got with that is like when I was on Pearl's um, thing, she straight away said that she doesn't want sex education in school. She's an idiot. She, she is an idiot. Pearl, you're a fucking idiot. But um, so she believes that yeah, sex education should be had in school, and her reason was that teachers could be groomers, could be her, and all that. And then on reflection, <laughs> I actually lo- thought, and actually went, Your face. <laughs> you're more likely to have a perpetrator in the home. I think an uncle, or what if you're your um, child's being touched by their parent. They're not learning sex education. They don't actually know that. No, daddy doesn't kiss I, your nunu before you go. I there. had to look up a study on this. Yeah. yeah. Um, for a different episode I'm doing. Um, because I had this theory about maybe stepfathers mm. might be the most common. But Abusers, yeah. I looked at those statistics from, there was only one US state where they had stats. And it said the, uh, the most common abuser in the family um, the abuse of like most of the abuse victims was the biological father. Right. 
Yeah. Jesus. Far and more than a teacher, I'd say. I wish I remembered this. Obviously, there's a bigger there. sample size with biological fathers than there is stepfathers because there's more. Yeah. Um, but, but, not but, yeah. There's yeah. more together than not together. So it might yeah. be that. But it it shocked me. I was like, yeah. Oh, I just thought oh that God. would be the safest person. Yeah, no, that's awful. Jesus. Yeah. This is getting demonetized. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no, no, no. It's still education. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I, and I wanted to get back in because we spoke a lot about um, like how it works in your work with faking orgasms. Mm -hmm. But I want to know what's it like. Have you done a sex scene in a mainstream movie? I have. What's it like? Um, Talk so us through with it. a cling film. No, so you can. The scene that I did was was the actual se sex scene that I did was in a pool in a, a jacuzzi. Mm. So I didn't have okay. to worry about anything so just down there. But we also did like a, a groupy scene, sort of thing in the same movie. So the movie's called Darker Shades of I've Summer. Got, I've got if many you want to watch. <laughs> you know, so have a little watch. Definitely watching. But um, <laughs> it's on like, you'll see, it's like the poster's me for some reason. I don't know. I'm not the main character, but the poster's me. So you'll see it. How do they, like, let's just go right to the beginning of it. Because okay. I'm just fascinated. Do you know it's a sex scene before you like sign the contract and stuff? Yeah. I guess so you they'll read the say, first. Or... Yeah, they'll say to you like, oh, this role, um, we're thinking about this role for you. Nudity required of a sexual nature. And so if you're happy with that, you say, oh, yeah, can I see the script? And then they'll give you the portion of the script that's got the sexual scenes in. In what control do you have over it? Do you have like, um, is it like, oh, oh you so get... so much. So, well, for me personally, in that scene, all the scenes that I know other people have done, there's been, there's been so much control. Like, I went into that and I was meant to have sex with two different people. So I was meant to have that jacuzzi scene and then another scene with somebody else. And then um, the person that I was meant to have sex with kind of, He's like, I'm friends with him now. He's really nice. Mm -hmm. um, but at the time, he this is the first time I'd ever met him. And he was like, um, it, it was a bit strange. He said something like, oh, like we were running behind on filming, which we always are. And he was like, oh, um, they need to hurry up because otherwise you're going to go. We're not going to get to do our scene or something. Oh, and I was like, oh, you can't say it. I was like, mm. yeah. so I was just like, oh, I don't really want to do that scene. And they were like, okay. That's wow. literally how easy it was. I was like, I don't want to do that. They were like, good. okay. I think that depends on the production that you're with and I think the company you're shooting for because... Did I they have um, an intimacy coordinator? Yes. Because I heard that they have those now. Yeah. Yeah, they have to have an intimacy coordinator. Is basically, sex scenes will be so... Like, in movies now, they'll be coordinated, like, fight scenes. Like, they'll be like, so, first of all, you're going to touch her head. Is that okay? It's like a Then dance, you're going to touch her it? arm. Is, is that, that right? okay? It's like a dance, yeah. It's choreographed. So uh -huh. if at any point, like say, so for my sex scene, I'm obviously bouncing on top of him and he's taking off my bra and pulling my hair from the back. Mm. So he's there and I'm here. If at any point he like put his face in my boobs and they and they didn't say that he could do that, they'd have gone, cut, are you okay? Is everything okay? What are you doing? Why That's have you done really, that? That's really, really good. We need that in porn. It's really, really safe. We desperately need it in mainstream porn. Yes. Yeah. I guess I have no, I have no knowledge of mainstream porn and this is where I... I think actually porn is quite da is damaging. Like, oh, okay. Yeah, we've well, seen my podcast. Yeah, yeah. I've been doing it. I like... think porn is, is quite is it's quite damaging. And like yeah. when you say that like, should be no, oh no, of course, yeah. of course, it's not yeah. the people. It's the it, it's just I guess what it's been built up to be. You know, climbing higher and higher. Hello, my dog. Are you, baby? Nightmare. <laughs> she wants attention. Um, what was I gonna say? Sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah you say to build it up. Can I please stop it? God, sorry. Um, so I'm all about being authentic. So when you say, oh, you need that in porn, like the thought of someone coordinating me in my scenes just gives me the biggest like, like but, but no. The, the, but the difference is you choose who you work with. Yes. Okay. Yes, that is true. That is true. You don't have that. You choose who you won't work with in porn. Mm -hmm. But even then, there's so much pressure on the girls that if they're difficult, then they'll just stop getting work from their agents. Right. There's a lot of control and coercion. Yeah, yeah, I can um, imagine. That's where I think. And then on set, there's not there's very rarely anyone looking out for them. in Europe. There's very rarely in America. It's a lot, lot better. Not perfect, but better. The scenes. Like, so obviously, I work with a lot of guys. A lot of the guys yeah. I work with do mainstream porn. Go to Prague, mm -hmm. do some scenes out there, and porn just seems to be outrageous now. It just in seems Europe. to be in Europe. the most shocking. We're talking triple anal. Jesus. Yeah. And Fucking there's a standard, out. guys injecting, triple anal, piss in the arse, yeah. piss in the mouth. The and company I'm... you're talking about has a quadruple one as well. See, I just find that absolutely right. And I think it's just because we've gone with porn and porn's become so standard now for like, what, the last 15 years. And it's only getting more and more and more extreme. It, and it's like you're pushing that boundary and going higher and higher. And... Yeah. It's actually the opposite is happening in oh. America. Oh, okay. But I think the reason it's happening in Europe is because 
no one's buying European porn. The industry is dying. Right. The abuse is out of control. And most of the girls are sex trafficked. Oh. Um, like most of them are from Russia and Ukraine. Now, unless the EU is giving out visas for porn work, um, then those girls are completely controlled by their agents or producers that bring them in because they can get them deported at any time. Yeah, oh, that's awful. And so sign up to so OnlyFans. Like, how, how do they say no to yeah. play? If you look in America now, very rare you'll see a girl through an anal scene because they don't have to. Because they don't want to, yeah. But they're working, they're making more money on their OnlyFans. They're just doing porn for publicity. Yeah. And plus the companies, they don't want that liability. Mm. They just want girls to do what they want to yeah. do, work with who they want to work with. And that really needs to be voiced more because I, what I really hate is people just like, oh, you just go and watch it on Pornhub. And people need to actually understand the difference between OF and porn is because you're supporting the creator in, in its entirety. Like yeah. most mainstream porn, like you said, the, the person doing this suit shoot might just get a fee and then they don't have rights to that content. So it constantly be blasted. You're making a man in a suit rich. And yeah, it depends it, like on the deal said, as well. Like, stuff. like um, you know, with Pornhub, like, I, I, I'd make money on my porn video. So it's, it can be good. Oh, but it just depends on your business model, I think. But yeah. Yeah, the whole thing, mainstream porn. It's a mess at the minute, but I love it. I also love that industry, and I'm just trying to make it a bit better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, I think there's a lot of people trying to make it better. Um, but yeah, let's get back into the fun bit because I got so dark. No, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, good, we're good. I, I want to know how. So, so I love that. I really love how much control you have and yeah. how they seem to actually listen to yeah, you. They listen, yeah, they listen. Um, and how long does it take to film a porn scene? Not a porn scene, a sex scene. <laughs> <laughs> um, do you know what? It varies completely diff like it's completely different depending on what scene it is. So for me, that scene, so the scene starts, I'm sat with the guy that I end up doing the sex scene with, and we're sat somewhere. This is a movie that's all about like polyamory and swinging and stuff. So he, I'm sat with him and his wife is in the hot tub kissing another man. Mm -hmm. And then she me and him are like having a laugh and she looks over and she's like getting a bit uncomfortable that we're like having a laugh. So the guy in the hot tub with her, so this is all part of the scene. Mm -hmm. So then the guy in the hot tub with her is like, oh, I can see you're distracted. I'll talk to you later. So he goes and then we come into the scene and I look at her and I start kissing her and like touching her boobs and she's like touching me. But then he pulls me away and then he starts kissing me and she's like, oh, and then she gets out and then I like get on his lap and then instantly I'm like bouncing up and down. And he's like from the back, like pulling the string of the bikini and taking it off. But I also said that I didn't, obviously I do any fans, but I also said that I didn't want my boobs in it. So they put nipple tape on it and only filmed from the side. Yeah, people got paid for oh, that. Really? People got paid for yeah, that. Yeah, because for, for OnlyFans, it's again like with the, the porn hub thing, like for OnlyFans, I can control where it goes yeah. or when I take it down. Whereas in a movie, if, you're, if my boobs are in it, they're never going to, never gonna be taken out of again do you know what i mean um, do they offer to pay more money mm. usually movies will give you more money if you're gonna be like nude or topless more or graphic, whatever yeah. that's quite coercive isn't it it's like yeah it's like yeah but it's the game isn't yeah. it i guess it's like well yeah. if you want to do it then you know here's the money <laughs> and did you worry that like oh maybe they'll give it to a different actress if i don't show my boobs? um i was a little bit worried like I got the script in that and I was like, hey, um, I said to the producer, like, hey, I don't really want to get my boobs out. And he was like, okay, no worries. That was really cool. I was like, oh, okay. And also, but that shows that they want yeah. you for the acting rather than the boobs, right? Yeah, exactly. He And he was really nice. Me and him are actually friends now. Um, and he was like, yeah, no, no worries. And then I got on set and I was a little bit worried because he wasn't actually on set, but the people on set were amazing, but I didn't know them at that mm -hmm. point. Um, and I was a little bit worried that they were going to like fill my boobs anyway. Yeah. So I was uh, like, oh, can oh, I get some noodles yeah. over there? And they were like, yeah, yeah, of course. Everyone was really understanding, really nice. Sounds like a very good crew and a good, very yeah. good production. It was and really, how, long really did nice. that, how long did it take to shoot that jacuzzi that scene? scene. Yeah. How long was the scene? Um, so the scene in itself is about four or five minutes long. It must have taken about an hour, two, how, two hours to be film. wrinkly. Yeah. Wrinkly in that hot tub. Well, it's like, oh, that's not you get in, I thought it might be out, You get in and you get out sort of thing. So the the worst part of it was actually getting out the hot tub after you'd been in because it was like freezing cold that day. Yeah, because I, I just had a, I don't know, in my head I thought, oh, because it's a movie, they'll take like yeah, days angles. on it. Yeah, <laughs> like, I don't know. It was really I shot, quick. I shot, yeah. yeah. I think they only did like either, it was either one 
angle or two angles with it because obviously I didn't want my boobs in it. So they want they didn't want to see that I had nipple tape on. Of course. Obviously, because it's a movie, you don't want to see that one of the actors is wearing nipple tape. So they could only film it from certain angles. Um, we did another scene in that same movie where it was kind of like a groupy scene where like there were about 15, 20 people in a room and everyone was having sex with each other or touching mm -hmm. each other or whatever. And that scene took a while to film because they had to get different angles of each person doing everything. And they actually brought in porn stars, like real porn stars. Oh, nice. To, to actually have sex. To act, well, they weren't actually having sex. They were just, they were fake having sex, but they wanted them to be almost completely naked. And obviously the porn meets. stars were like, yeah, of course we can do yeah. this. So yeah, Oof. they came in. That's really cool. And because I want to compare it to like porn, for example. So like yeah. with, with what you do, because you're choosing your partners, I guess like kissing is usually good, right? Yeah, mine is all about being as as authentic as, yeah. pos as possible. See, yeah. with me in mainstream porn, it's like if you're both into each other and comfortable, you do, and it helps the scene. But if you're not into each other, you probably don't, and you just get right. straight to the action. Hmm. But like in a movie, like yeah. you kind of gotta kiss you have the person. To, yeah, exactly. And it's I think that would be harder than having sex, for example. Um. So yeah, the f it is in a movie kissing them is harder than the sex because the sex isn't real and you're not even touching each other's like nothing's going on i'm covered here no one can see it but i'm covered they're covered do you know what i mean it's like, intimacy yeah you're you very right someone, next to each other so it, but it's yeah. like and like in like porn sex for example um i don't know if you find this with only fans but like what the sex you would have in your private life it looks kind of boring so you're like and you've got to open your body up to the camera oh right yeah, yeah so yeah, like yeah. You're, you're not intimate at all you're just kind of grinding bumping genitals and you're not like touching you're not your bodies are not yeah, like skin you're not on skin each other and stuff. whereas in a movie it's like really close you yeah can, it's very sensual if the person has bad breath you can <laughs> smell it yeah because i mean i've had like stinky girls in on porn sets like oh, there's some really? really stinky girls but there's some really stinky guys as Do well they have of to course. shower before you can shower them but if they I, i've no if like someone some people are just smelly i think that's called bv <laughs> no, 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 no. I've even had like um, one girl, like we asked her to shower and she came back and she still smelled of body odor. Oh. Like really strong. And I don't know what it is. Do the first scene in the shower. Just going to do a little warm up. We're just going to do arms up. <laughs> Scrub. But you don't know what they smell like when you book them. So. No, yeah, yeah, of course. And it's just modeling, isn't it? Yeah, I've, so. had, yeah. I've had that in the industry. My friend, some people saying that like, because I've, I've seen them work with them. I'm like, oh, I might work with da da da. Have you, how was it? And like, no came it took four hours to get here we offered her a shower and she didn't and it was just she stunk and just like mm. okay take that away from my my list of potentials but we can like keep our distance and get through it but yeah, yeah how, but what's us, it like, like dealing with that intimacy what um, do you do so with us like when you're doing a scene where you have to kiss somebody or you're like in a relationship or whatever on screen so i had a scene where in that same movie i was married to somebody else because obviously it's about being swingers and like being poly and stuff. Um, and I was like, had to be literally like pushed up. We were pushed up against each other. And he's like holding me. And we're like laughing and joking in the scene that we're doing and we're kissing. And then we go to a different scene and we're sat down at the table, but I'm like leaning again, like he's there and I'm like leaning against him. And I'm like in between his legs while we're like sat at the table listening to the guy talking. And it's all very like, I know people that have done, like, people that I'm friends with that have done shower scenes together where mm -hmm. you're literally showering together and your bodies are literally pushed up against each other and you're stroking each other because you're meant to be in love in the movie and you're like, I love you, and you're in the face and stuff. And what happens if the guy gets hurt? Uh, hurt, yeah. Oh, yeah, so this is, like, people ask me this question all the time. <laughs> and generally, so they'll basic. get, like... <laughs> <laughs> no, you're not. Um, it is interesting. Generally, it's interesting. It, oh, um, this is interesting. <laughs> Um, usually if the guy gets like hard on when you're filming a scene like this, um, they'll be like excused to take five minutes. Really? So he has to control it. So he can't well, just. Well, that's the thing. Like it's hard. Obviously if it happens, n the girl or whoever isn't going to mention it because you're acting and like anyone who's like, if you brush it, if you touch my nipples like this, they're going to get hard. You know what I mean? So yeah. if I'm brushed up against your penis and I'm like dancing on you or something. Do you might, know what I mean? Might not even it, need to touch sometimes. It's not even being an actor because I'll just, just encourage so, it, and I'll just be like, <laughs> sometimes it's gonna happen. So if it happens, like you encourage, like take five minutes or whatever. 
if something yeah. like that happens. But no one's going to mention it. But like if you're acting the girl in question like, would never say, like, oh. look like you're into it, then for the sake it's going to... The, if you're like a method actor for example exactly yeah it's also like like yeah it's when you're thinking to yourself like oh because obviously to act as well you have to have like an internal monologue which is like basically means say if you're you said to me are you okay and i go yeah i'm okay thank you how are you and you go you don't look okay in my head when i'm seeing them lines i'm going well, i don't feel like i'm okay i actually feel mm. like shit but i can't tell you that do you know what i mean like that's an internal monologue so when you're acting in sex scenes or whatever, men and women have internal monologues like, oh, I want to touch him, like, oh, I want to feel him, I can't wait to feel what happens later and stuff. Obviously, it's not real. But, like, that's the thing going on in my head. So in males' heads, that's the sort of thing as well. So you're, yeah. you have to force yourself into it. But then when you're too into it, you're like, okay, let's take five. Yeah, I was going to say, it's does, really it, hard, does yeah. it create a real connection? Yeah, yeah so I was, cause so many people would like, you know, like Strictly Come Dancing, they ended yeah. up falling in love because they're in each dancing. other's bubble. Yeah. They're in each other's yeah. bubble, they're in each other, they're touching each other, you yeah. know, they're pulsing together. Like, same for these intimate moments. Like, have yeah. you ever... I, I, I fall for people so quickly. I fall for people that, really I quickly. I think everybody person. does. When it's good, it's good. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, for the, that, how, when, what happened with the jacuzzi guy? Sex scene? Did you ever have... um, We have a podcast now, that guy. Oh, yeah. oh. He's the guy that I have a podcast with. His name's Steve. So, hello, Steve, okay. if you're watching. Is he also No, the... we've not slept together. Oh. <laughs> um, we slept together in the movie, but never in real life. We're just like, he's one of my best friends in the whole world. That's really cool. That was the first time I ever met him, but obviously doing such an intimate scene... And did you have a partner way. when you did that scene? Um, I had a boyfriend, yeah, when I did that scene. How did he feel happy. about it? Um, he was he was a bit of a dick, actually. So I hope you're watching, you cunt. Oh, um, oh the C, first C word on the vodka. Uh, okay. like of all of them. <laughs> Is that the worst one? That's like 18 <laughs> you, you That's like it. my go-to word in you sex. Win. Yeah, that's mine. You I win say the prize. That I hope you're watching, you absolute trollop. <laughs> oh, we're going to do it again. <laughs> yeah, no, change it so you can keep it in. Um, <laughs> I had a boyfriend at the time that I filmed that, yeah, and he was like really controlling, really nasty and stuff. Oh, and he was like messaging me and like, like just absolutely fuming, going mad. But obviously, this is while my you job. Were filming it. While I was filming, yeah. yeah. And obviously, that's bad for me as well because it gives me anxiety. So he's just projecting I'm his like, insecurities in get, himself and in this relationship. I don't know if you get the same thing when you're working, but I find that when I'm dating someone that's not okay with porn but they say they are. Mm. They always know exactly when you're filming by instinct. Yeah. And they text like, hey, how are you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, my like, I'm just about to like yeah. not focus on you right now. My first, my first collab actually. So when I f first started OF, I had a partner at the time and uh, this thing, um, big pandemic happened. I won't say that word just in case it's triggering for like. No, no. Maybe the, the monetization is well gone. <laughs> that, <laughs> that, that train left like three minutes in. I think. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so. Um, so he, I was I was progressing up and up and up and then I lost my Instagram so I started to dip. So he was like, "Why don't you collaborate with girls?" And the first one to um, approach me was Elbrook. Elbrook is obviously huge in the right. industry, massive opportunity, just a house full of girls, all girl girl stuff. But there was going to be one guy there, her partner, and he was a bit weird about that. But he was like, "Go for the girl, girl. Do just do the girl, nothing with the guy." And I was like, "That's fine." On the day, loses his absolute shit abusive messages Ooh. absolute awful I ended up staying in london getting a bit drunk meeting a best friend and you know just it, we're nearly in relationship getting back at 5 a.m he's up for work and he's and i was thinking the next day to calm down no i'm changed now even though he actually encouraged it when i got home the next day and i was sleeping woke up to him smashing our photos up glass Whoa. up oh it was awful he's a good person he's a good guy and that I think the bigger picture is he really, he wanted to support me. He knew me doing the girl, do girl. It. Yeah, when it comes to it. And that's, that's, that's his condition and that's not his, that's not his fault. Like he obviously went about communicating it incredibly wrong, but yeah. I can't blame him for his, his feelings. He just expressed it in, in, wrongly. But obviously it was, it was just, and that taught the whole relationship. But from then it just changed. And I hadn't even slept with a guy. This is sleeping with mm -hmm. girls. And I think maybe because I'm authentically bi and it's just, I, I, I just really don't know. But it was a massive, it was a massive shame. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's with, first experience as well, collaborating. I think with extreme things, you just don't know how you're going to react until it happens. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like, that's it, what my ex was like. It's acting. So I just thought exactly. it would have been with, more cool. Exactly. It's not real. There's no real sex going on. There's no real connection going on. You've got multiple people watching you, holding cameras. Honestly, oh, yeah. there's An about intimacy 50 code. people watching, like somebody holding a boom, and then the camera guy, and then the B camera guy, and then the. The AD, the producer, everyone's there. 
if an actor does get hard in that environment, like send them to our side of the yeah. industry because <laughs> yeah. like, it's really hard to find someone really? that, that can do it naturally. Yeah, that's like, almost it, everyone yeah. like, no. it doesn't happen often. I don't think it's a superpower. Even when you're like you can. Tommy yeah. Slade is your guy. Tommy Slade's the one. I'll name you. <laughs> <laughs> he's always, always is up it? to the chart. Yeah, he's great. Wow. There you go. There you go. <laughs> but it and, does happen. Yeah. And the director, let's go to the orgasm bit to keep you on topic. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> like, yeah. Um, so you had to have an orgasm on camera? Um, Did they so direct the orgasm? Of, um, How does it work? Well, they kind of just said to us, like, what are you comfortable with? Do you want to have, like, a not touching each other go of, like, let's walk through what we're going to do and stuff. So we'll go through, we're going to sit on his lap and then we'll start bouncing. And then I'm going to, like, lift up a minute and he's going to put his hand on his leg so it looks like he's, like, taking my knickers off or whatever from the camera angle. And then he's going to undo my thing, take that off, pull, pull my hair. And then that's when I'm going to start like moaning and stuff and I'm bouncing more. And, it's and he's going to like sound grab me. Or just music. This is with sound as well. Okay. Yeah. So do they like direct the noises you make? Um, They weren't really directing the noises. No, they were pretty happy with the thing, what we did the first time. So they were like, yeah, yeah, that was good. That was good. Do that again. Does the script say like intimate noises or something it, like it, that? The script, I can't remember exactly what the script said, but it was like... um. She starts riding him oh. and he is pulling. It's like, it's a sexy moment. Da, da, da. Like it was explained in the script what we had to do. Yeah. I feel like in movies and TV, the girl's orgasm is represented by her throwing her head. Yeah, <laughs> going. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah. Just so quickly as well. Like I think we have Fifty Shades of Grey to blame for that. Like she'd come in like five minutes. And yeah. every God. 80s movie. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. Just, it's just, that's just not realistic. Though. Yeah. No. It gets a bit boring, though, to watch, like, a 20-minute awkward sex scene in a movie or something. Yeah. The thing I like about sex in TV and film, though, is the one that always sticks out in my mind is there's a good sex scene in The Americans where they set it to um, David Bowie's Under Pressure. Oh. So good. Choreographed so well. Really? It's just like a sexy music video. Yeah. Yeah. I like that in a movie you have that freedom. Whereas in porn, it's like, people don't put music in porn anymore, do they? Because it's... I don't, don't really watch porn, so I don't know. I guess yeah. no, no, no. Back when I was a kid, like as soon as porn started, the funky music started, <laughs> and it's like as soon as the sex scene yeah. started, I was like acting, 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 and then sex, funky music. Really? Yeah, but yeah. At some point in the early two thousands, people realised that you sell more porn if you don't have the music in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sound weird. effects. I'm all about sound effects. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Nice. Yeah, any topics you girls want to bring up? Hmm. About orgasms? Yeah, um, fake orgasms. Specifically fake. I don't know. What's the turning point when you realise, for you personally, I'm going to fake an orgasm now? What, what do you mean? Like during, during What's the, the sex? Point? Yeah, during the it's sex. It's when I get up on that hill. So often like that isn't, like especially nowadays, it's very rare I fake because yeah. like, I'm confident myself. But... Because I said, like, when, I, when I'm having sex that you can do three in a row, I can't do that. Mine's a big uphill climb. And then when I get to that point, I can be at that point, like, flushed in the face. Like, it's, I'm nearly there. I'm at 99%. And I could be at 99% for fucking ages. Right. So it's just, it's sometimes knowing you're not going to get over the edge, but you've got me all the way there. And it's just, mm-hmm. it's like, yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to think. The turning point for, like, when I stopped faking it and I and started to experience good sex, I think I went through a pattern of, bad shitty relationships yeah. with bad men that I was fluffing their ego. I was controlled in a bad situation, mm-hmm. so I faked it for them. And then I think I just got in a really good luck stream of yeah. having sex with good people. First going to Australia and I got with a, a couple, an uh, um, open couple that I got to explore yeah. with them. And I started definitely faking it less because I was actively more in like a threesome. So I had a more female yeah. and male dynamic. So I, had, I think... I became much more sensual and I was able to relax and not be this porn star. I was being like, you know, like yeah. fakey porny in sex before that. Then after that, I started um, sleeping actively with one of my best friends that I bought like a really big friendship with and yeah. I, was, I could talk to him. So I was able to talk. And then in that, I started exploring toys, butt plugs, yeah. um, ball gags and all these kind of things. So I got to explore that. And then I moved on to um, my first big partner. <laughs> okay. So I had yeah. my first big guy and for me that's just easier to climax so yeah. <laughs> and then I did that and then Same I, for you. 
and and then I just started this journey and I just got with better people and then from yeah, there I like just learned the what I liked and what I wanted and I, yeah. I, got, I was even saying to my friends I've been on a, a really good luck streak of all these people that I'm sleeping with and now I'm in the industry and I sleep with a lot of people and they're brilliant they're professional they know what they do obviously size matters in my world so it's yeah yeah I've been so, very blessed so when you are faking it's more the most common reason is just because it wasn't that good for me that's why I fake yeah I I, 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 like I said it could just be that day like mm -hmm. I said if I've done yeah I, I mean that like day or if I've done that. alcohol yeah. But I also believe it's not because I've not allowed it to be that good. Mm -hmm. I've gone into this porn star actress. I've learned from porn how to have sex and, yeah. and I've not learned my anatomy. I've not learned that at that point. I need the pillow under. Like even yeah, now, yeah. I've learned, you have to learn about your body and how it climaxes yeah. before another partner can learn. Because one of the things is like you say, when you're on that hill is that, and I think a lot of girls have this maybe in a different way to you. I think everyone's a bit different is obviously you both want the girl to come, but as soon as you say, like, did you come? Are mm -hmm. you close? It's like adding some pressure to it. Yes. Yeah, yeah it's and like you're rushing it. Like, let's say, like, the girl didn't come, and then she's worried about it, he's worried about it, and then the next time it's even harder. So it's like, how do you communicate it in a way that doesn't make the girl feel pressure? Um, I'd say, like, instead of saying, like, are you going to come? Or, or, like, if you can see that something's going off instead of saying like are you gonna come or are you closed i'd be like i'd say something like i don't know on, but along the lines of like most guys can't even tell if a girl's like, like, interested in them in a yeah, bar, you know? exactly. like we're not good at subtleties so we need maybe say like oh can is there anything i can do to like yeah. what do you want me to do like tell me what to do or something tell that's me why you, i say at the beginning do, yeah. before you have sex that's why i ask like, yeah. yeah things like don't be afraid like and i make yeah. that quick because i'm quite like I said, quite domineering, and I'll, I'm happy to take charge in the situation and be like, yeah. just, just tell me, kind of thing. But I think yeah. I have a bit of a niche in the industry. Like when I'm about to come, I don't know when I started it, and it wasn't till my videographer pointed it out that he said he's never seen a female do it. I get the guy to tell me to come. So when I'm nearly there, mm -hmm. I'll be like, tell me to come, tell me to come. Like that's yeah. that's my thing. And it's the last like 30 seconds. Oh my god, my dog's moaning. It's the last like 30 seconds. So I'm. Every time I come, that's that's my thing. I'm like, tell me to come, tell me to come. So they know, yeah. they yeah. know. I like when people communicate. It's like, it's mm. part of dirty talk, isn't it? When Ella, it's okay. Mm -hmm. Come on. Like, it can just be part of the action yeah. to just commentate on what's going on a little bit. You yeah. Know? And I like that. I like it when men talk to me as well. And like, talk. They do, I want dirty talking. I want noises. I want moaning. Do you know what I mean? I want you to touch me. Don't just have sex with me and then not touch me at all. Touch me. Like, don't just... I just don't want that. I don't want just that. If you're going to give me just that, wasting you wasting your time. But people exactly. need to know they need to be educated. Yeah. That it's not just they that. Do. Because the form they of education is from films yeah. and from porn. And that is all it is. That it is, all it is, it is yeah. only that. It's just and, that. And both partners need to really open up, don't they? they if only one does, it's not comfortable and no, also to yourself to accept what you like for yourself that's why i'm a big advocate for self-love mm. and not just the pleasuring sense but just you know just telling yourself that you're good be proud yeah. of your achievements i think it's so easy to focus on the negative i've even friends who ask me obviously you all do social media who always you always screenshot the bad comment or you reply to the bad comment about 100 good comments like yeah still focus on the positive we live in a system where it's so easy to focus on the negative yeah i agree with that definitely um, I'm just going to see all my questions. I've got loads of questions, but I think we've covered <laughs> most of them naturally. Yeah, I think, I think I'm done. Nice. <laughs> oh, you done? I think I'm he's fake finished. orgasmed out. He's climbing. He's, he's climbing. Climb he's finished. Yeah. He's reached your climax. Now let's all do our fake orgasm. I, I climb. <laughs> I was going to suggest that. But... <laughs> I'll screen the roof down. Don't. don't I'm loud. The thing is, I I think about like I, I've done fake orgasms on camera before, but. Like, I've done a real one and then done a fake one. You know, like... Oh, okay. Because um, if you need a cream pie scene, but the girl's not on birth control... Yes. Then you have to fake it. Yes. Um, And I just think, like, the noise is... Like, I'm, not, I'm not an actor like you. And, you know, I didn't do porn for... The, no, I mean, I'm not doing porn because I'm a good actor or anything. But what's, like, your, what's your real orgasm noise? Because every guy is different. I've had guys think, that shut the hole and they're like... Huh, huh. <laughs> and those guys that you haven't got a clue, they've just climaxed. Mine's more like 
lifting a heavy weight but unexpectedly like huh. like someone just passed me a heavy box and like <laughs> <laughs> like 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 something might break <laughs> just that repeats yeah. it several times <laughs> Yeah, it's like, that's good. And I'm probably like, you know, covered in sweat and yeah, mess. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> Some guys sweat sexy. so much, don't they? Oh, that's the sign that, that they've you? been hydrated. Is it? Uh, is that a good that, sign? Sign they've been hydrated. Sure. Their body's like, perspirating. If they're not sweating wow. a lot, then they're not working hard enough. Yeah, they're not working hard enough. You need to work yeah. them harder. Yeah. Well, actually, I say I'm a size queen, right? There is this one guy in Costa Rica that I slept with. He, he wasn't big. He was average. But because he, he was an athlete, he was a professional mm -hmm. surfer. So... Boys, if your cock isn't hard, usually it's an indication that your heart is weak. You have too much cholesterol and you're not at your healthiest. Just one of the first indications when going your to the gym can help you. Yeah, sex life a lot. like people like yeah. if you're going a bit soft, you've normally got something. You need to work yeah. out more. You need to increase your cardio. So basically, he was a professional athlete, so it was it was average, but it was like fucking marble. It was rock hard, and I can't remember the point I was going with this story. But I was <laughs> yeah, I, lovely. It, I have only like been going to the gym and stuff for about three years mm -hmm. like i'm not super fit but i'm not like a gym guy mm. i've always wanted to like have sex with one of those super gym fitness girls and they're not interested in me Th they tend to go for like the gym bros oh, like the steroid yeah. guys you know um but i managed to sleep with one last year and it was definitely better and well, yeah since you've been going to the gym you mean since like you're no all just you mean having sex with someone who's genuinely athletic oh right yeah yeah, yeah. it was yeah it was just a different experience it's cardio mate for like, sex, is, yeah. sex is active and, like i couldn't keep up like right. i've got a big appetite yeah, i'm a professional but i couldn't keep up with someone yeah. that was really i couldn't keep fitness. up with the costa rican guy he uh, literally just... that was my thing i was linking it with sweat because he because yeah. he was so physically fit i mean he'd literally i was destroyed i was, I was going ah. i was out and he had one sip of water and went oh yeah so a little bit tired Again, and I was like, "Oh my this girl god!" Was the same. god. She was like, she was like one hundred percent from the beginning, and just constantly. Yeah. And it's like I couldn't. Up and like cardio for better sex. Yeah. And it wasn't like little Tommy that was struggling to keep up. It was big Tommy. <laughs> I, was like, yeah. I just couldn't. Yeah, like you couldn't do it. <laughs> no. Yeah. So she gets on top. I had it sister. Yeah, that, that was the great thing about it though, because it's like normally when girls go on top, it's they do it a bit, and then they realize that. They can't keep this up for very long. And That's yeah, okay. no, most most <laughs> That's don't me. last very long. Especially so. if it's squatting. Yeah, I'm uh. I'm kind of known in the industry for my for my riding and my throat skills. So um, yeah, I am. It will give me only three minutes, but most guys don't actually last that long. My most recent scene, uh. actually, I did three guys, and I uh, the finale. So we did all the scene, the finale. I finished them all with riding with under a minute each. Wow. At, the, at the end impressive yeah that's my thing riding queen oh and that's good that's <laughs> great watch round your neck <laughs> yeah <laughs> all right so let's wrap up i think okay. let's wrap up literally. what did we learn today it's always the same lesson on sex podcast so it's always communicate with your partners but yeah i think we also learned that men fake yeah. a lot more than we thought for sure 100 yeah. yeah, and you said gay gay males equally statistical were to straight females faking it with their partners i was quite surprised yeah because like I, thought... I thought they'd be so open yeah yeah i happen. did i thought so too i did too yeah yeah so i was quite surprised by that and i honestly meeting someone that's started by orgasming but faking that you weren't <laughs> yeah. so i find i found you yeah. very very interesting yeah yeah that was, uh... Yeah, I don't know why I was doing that. I Who think, knows? I think I, I think you just wanted shy. to break him inside. No, no, no it's not deep. I loved up. him. I loved him so much, and I was yeah, like, and but you, I was just too shy to say. Sometimes we hurt the people we love. Yeah, yeah. no, I don't. <laughs> do. I just think, like again, miseducation. She wasn't encouraged that orgasms yeah. are a beautiful and sacred yeah, exactly. thing, exactly. and things to be. Like, oh my god, this is yeah, so embarrassing. Things to be like, proud of and rewarded. Yeah. I wonder you know? how many great relationships get ended just because of insecurities and lack of communication in lack sex. of communication yeah because mm. like that relationship you did have it could have been so much better if you just because it was good right yeah the yeah the good. relationship was good but and the he was just good like and, yeah. what am i doing here yeah <laughs> he was just, also i was his first partner as well so he i probably fucked that up <laughs> <laughs> he's probably scarred for life yeah he's but like, the, i can't make any girls the funny thing is you've actually he's actively asked you did you come and you've actively said no yeah. like i wonder where that it wasn't yeah. your brain that felt like shame for orgasming or like whatever. I find yeah, that really I was interesting. Like embarrassed. And your first sexual experience really does stay with you. Like one of my friends, when he lost his virginity, 
he thought the girl said is it in yet oh. and um she didn't she just said are you okay but his insecurities made yeah. him think and she oh had God. a foreign accent so oh. and um it devastated him he didn't have sex again for like 10 years or oh that's got to be one of the worst things yeah. one of the worst things that people could say to you yeah, yeah. It he got over oh it in God. the end but I, I think these things, it's funny the things that stay with yeah. me. Yeah. My friend had the same. He said that he'd been with this girl, they'd bigged it up, they'd been talking loads, and he was fucking her on top. And she just looks down and looks at him and goes, It's very big, is it? <laughs> oh, wow, that's it's so garden, cruel. Yeah. It's just cruel, isn't it? But she it? must have got off on that a bit, I think. You th Yeah, I, I thought so too. You wouldn't the way say he said like that, that, like, yeah, for sure. But I was just like, Ouch. Yeah, man. that's awful. That's very nice. Ouch. The crazy thing is that these things can lead you to kind of like once you get over the trauma of it you then get into it mm. like I love you, it, yeah. it kind of becomes like a fetish in itself like people who have been cheated on often mm -hmm. end up kind of enjoying being turn your trauma into kinks like turn your trauma into kinks yeah, yeah. i get a lot of is it healthy well, I think sometimes you're switching it, it. you're switching it, the yeah. narrative and you're choosing yeah. to i think it is if it's if you're happy and it's not actually deep non-loathing like yeah like so i get a lot of cucks and a lot of small penis humiliation because obviously being a size queen in the industry so mm. i'm an advocate for it i'm here for it got great content for it so yeah so i've seen i've seen kinks harm relationships before right yeah yeah um which is bad i guess yeah but um but were they kinks that developed throughout the relationship or things that were suppressed and then went in a safe environment after a year could then express them i think then... the problem is when you have a kink but your partner's not comfortable with it mm -hmm. yeah like, cause... i've got a weird kink that people aren't usually comfortable with go What's on that? i've got a blood kink oh whoa yeah what, like, that's like, what, like you that on changes. your period or right. like cutting really yeah that's really that's i know new. everyone i tell is like Wow. I've got to be a bit of period. I want to cut kink. them a bit and I want them to be and them. I want to watch the blood. Like, well, I, I don't mind if they want to cut me as long as they're going to like touch the blood and put it on their face or something. <sighs> but I, and I want to cut them and like, I want them, I want them to feel the pain of it. Not a lot, not of a giant knife and like slice off the arm, just a little bit so there's blood dripping and like squeeze it out and like taste it or put it on your face and, and shit. See, I, I've got, um, you know, I've got it's a supposed period. to be acting in horror movies. Right? <laughs> It's not. I've got a bit of a period kink, like as in I've had a couple guys that um, have like, it started by accident who like ate me out on it. because And then now I just think if a guy does it and eats me out when I'm on, I just think, wow, you're a man. You've yeah, yeah, my, yeah, I think that. You've put my pleasure before this, oh, no, you're dirty. And so now if a guy eats me out when I'm on a period, like I'll marry you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I ain't marrying someone unless they do that. Yeah, and I, I just have to have that. And I just have to push back on the blood thing. I think it's just came upon a different one about fetish parties where they said there was a stage show where the people were like literally cutting themselves and that was their fetish. Wow. And for me, I just wonder like when a kink does become harmful for yourself. Yeah. Yeah. And obviously I would never advocate yeah. any yeah. kind no, of... That's an extreme shit. and a very big Yeah, niche. mine. And, and, mine. And, I, and I think I saw on like Alice's... Um, Mm -hmm. Instagram, she put, shared a post saying that how harm from kinks is actually classed as abuse in British law. Wow. So if you are giving injuries to your partner, um, even if it's consensual, the consent won't Methods, matter yeah. if there's like legal problems. Wow. I, I think, didn't know that. But... I think that was my interpretation, but obviously yeah. consult a lawyer before you... <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Before you cut somebody's head off. No, I, I, I you, think... Have you actively done that kink with partners then? I have done that with one person, yeah. And oh, I always tell them what the why, why did it people I like. The psychology of it. When, did, when did that I don't, come from? I, can't, I remember there was a point in time when I was like, that's actually quite sexy. Oh, you saw it? Like, no, no, I didn't watch anyone like cutting anyone or anything like that. It was like maybe like there was like blood or dripping out of someone's nose or like in real someone life cut or their in finger. A movie. Oh, yeah. Like oh, a, you like, like the a nosebleed or something. I like the dripping of the blood. Or like when you tie something around and then you cut it and it squirts. Wow. It squirts. That's <laughs> yeah. I've never had blood squirts. You're fascinating. Wow. Yeah. wow. But I, I would oh. never do like a big cut enough for it to be like Damaging. a scar. Yeah. And I'd never want a scar. Wow. When you tell a partner that you've got this kink, do you like have a knife in your hand at the time? <laughs> and I'm like, like, oh yeah, so by the well, way, yeah. come on. <laughs> No, well, well, it's, it's, it's like, yeah, I'm into biting, but not like yeah. that's, that's, that's a lot of guys are not up for it. A what lot about of you? Like, what about your no. kinks? Honestly, I think, like I said, I just found myself growing quite vanilla in the last year or so. But 
I'd say my biggest kink is maybe like clothing, like not, not necessarily like, oh, I like fetish wear or something or me dressing up. Just, I just tend to be really into clothes. I just love how whatever outfit a girl wears, it almost like turns into a different person. Okay. Mm-hmm. So in, not, not necessarily sex clothes, but just, just an outfit, the visual. It also, because you're pretty so desensitized because you're obviously running, running porn, being in the industry, like you've seen. Yeah. The genitals and the positions and... Yeah, I feel I've explored all the kinks Mm -hmm. I want to explore and I don't have a fetish, I'd say. So I've not got like one thing I'm drawn to. But obviously if I get, if I'm with someone long term, I like mix things up and try different things. But I haven't got like a a fetish, I'd say. But apart from maybe clothes, like... Yeah. It's really, really... It just, if the girl's not changing her looks and doing different things, then... Oh, okay. It... Got to be a fashionist. Not fashion, but just, I don't know, it's like, you know, like if you, like it'll sound silly, but let's say your girlfriend comes back from work and she's got like a more professional look. Okay. It's like a different Character. kind of, yeah, a different yeah, yeah. Kind of sex. It's almost like and real life cosplay, you know? Yeah. yeah. And like, then, okay, that's interesting. Like, that. like Two, it's, yeah, it's the looks, the, the clothing looks that turn me on. Or, wow. or it can be anything. Okay. So long as it's the girl I like. So in the yeah. Why kink's the most boring, I guess? What's yours, Biden? Yeah, so being bitten, not. Not down in between the legs, you get slapped around the face. I learned that. It's, um, Ella, stop it. It's being bitten on my neck, my shoulders, nipple biting. Um, but for me, it's the guys love it, but throat fucking for me. That's no. my absolute go to. Yeah, absolutely being throated like you hate me. Yeah. <laughs> like absolutely, you hate like, me. Like you're trying to kill me. I have to tell people as well, like, like try, try, go for it. That's a skill to develop. Oh, yeah, I have developed it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's extra. <laughs> <laughs> always it's a fun. job always it's fun. a job so you know can anyone learn nothing. to do that or do you have to have like a so i, I so i've actually done this and people want me to make like a little like tutorial video <laughs> with other people like Alex yeah because if you do well. i've got some girls i could maybe give it to <laughs> uh, like like for rule number one don't eat you need to fast so before oh. any scene i fast because you will throw up you oh yeah you're like that extreme of it. oh yeah it goes yeah yeah to the base mate so yeah yeah and like it, you will throw up so I've known if you do throw like you will that, throw up what throwing up don't throw up what and have they eaten i don't know if they eat or not yeah like if to, to, to truly go to go for the back of the throat to actually fuck it like a pussy you will be sick if you have no even if i've had a lot of water it comes it comes out i'm just gonna say in general it's best not to eat a lot before sex yes like swimming you know it's an yeah. activity yeah. An activity. And you're not allowed to eat before swimming. They, they do say they don't say that. When you were a big kid and go swimming, they can't just like half an hour to go in the pool after eating. They'd always say you'd get cramp if you did, and then you'd drown. <laughs> <laughs> really? But, yeah. <laughs> Cons that we were I'm, told. I, in I the remember 90s. once like, being hungry and like eating yogurt and thinking, like, I don't hope I'm going to be okay. Yeah. Before, like, just tentatively <laughs> really? swimming. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I don't know why Sorry, I said that. Yeah, I All the like myths that. and lies of, like, you know, being. Like, Time down and in a pool. And it's like, it's if that's about. true, why is there always food on boats? Yeah. Yeah, because then you'll drown if you fall out the pool. Out the boat. <laughs> but, <laughs> but yeah. Um, but yeah. Anyway, sorry about that. <laughs> so yeah, this was, this was fun. Yeah. Okay. You know, yeah. Like, thanks for doing it. And do you want to tell people where they can find you and all that? I'll link to everything, bro. Uh, yes, I have two Instagrams. Uh, Georgie, we're 97. We're spelt W-E-A-R-E. And Riding Queen, <laughs> 97. You can also find me on OF. <laughs> um, so my Instagram is Natasha Tossini. I'm putting, I'm doing that just in case he puts a little. <laughs> oh. My editing skills are not that. <laughs> <laughs> so now I'm just going to look straight. So my Instagram is Natasha Tosini. So it's spelled Natasha, no gaps, no dots, T-O-S-I-N-I. And obviously I have OnlyFans too, which is Natasha Tosini, I think. Obviously. I don't know, but it's in my Instagram bio anyway. But follow me on Instagram, like my pictures, follow me and <laughs> comment on them and do all of that stuff. And every picture of you in a movie, I'm just going to be like, is it real or fake now? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> every single one alright no thanks so much oh, thank you thank you so much guys thank you for watching love